Good evening and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending March 21st, 2020. Things may be pretty quiet out in the real world, but the world of anime news is getting back into the swing of things this week with lots of new anime announcements. So let's get right to that, shall we? First up, uh, the one-shot manga Burn the Witch from Bleach creator Tite Kubo is inspiring an anime film. The mid-length theatrical film, which probably means like hour and 15 minutes, is set to, de to debut this fall. The one-shot chapter takes place in the same world as the Bleach manga and centers on witches working in Reverse London's Natural Dragon Management Agency, as you do. They work to promote coexistence between supernatural creatures and the humans who can see them, but of course sometimes must undergo missions to exterminate evil creatures as well. Sounds like a pretty normal day at the office to me. The chapter was published by Shueisha in July of 2018 and released in English by Viz Media at the same time. Kubo also plans to turn the one-shot into a full serialization, so assume, uh, presumably this is sort of a kickoff for that whole thing. There we are. Uh, next, Katakawa's Kimirano light novel website held a live stream event this week to celebrate its first anniversary and announced two new anime projects based on their light novels. First up is Combatants Will Be Dispatched, written by the creator of Konosuba, Natsume Akatsuki. The comedy story centers around Number 6, a combatant for the self-proclaimed evil organization Kisaragi Secret Society. He and his partner are dispatched to investigate a new alien world to plan their interstellar invasion, but find a fantasy world there instead. Katakawa began publishing the novels in 2017 and published the fifth novel in January. The novels also inspired a manga adaptation, which debuted in March 2018. So if you're looking for more fun fantasy hijinks with a bit of a sci-fi twist, keep an eye out for this one, and that is coming soon. Excuse me. The second anime announced from Katakawa this week is an adaptation of Battle Sci-Fi Light Novel Series 86. These novels also began publication under Katakawa in 2017, with the eighth, vol eighth, eighth volume coming out in May. Yen Press published the novels in English and describes this story thusly. Get ready for this. Quote, The Republic of San, Mag San Magnolia San Magnolia, has been attacked by its neighbor, the Empire. Outside the 85 districts of the Republic, there is the non-existent 86th district, where young men and women continue to fight. Sheen directs the actions of young suicide bombers, while Lena is a curator who commands a detachment from a remote rear. The story of the tragic struggle between these two begins, end quote. Yes, the story does focus on child soldiers fighting for a country committing racial genocide, so this is not a cheery tale. If you're into serious stories, though, this one has been very well reviewed. The series won the grand prize in the 23rd Dengeki Novel Prize competition in 2016, which is the most prestigious award for unpublished light novel authors. After its publication, it ranked second in the 2018 edition of the This Light Novel is Amazing guidebook and ranked fifth in the 2019 edition. So uh, serious stuff, but it sounds like it's definitely, you know, up there. Back to lighter subject matter, an isekai with another twist, this time in boy's love form. Publisher Shueisha announced on Wednesday that ITKZ's The Titan's Bride boy's love manga is inspiring an anime adaptation. In this story, high school basketball player Koichi gets whisked away to another world while enjoying some alone time. When he arrives, he finds himself in a land of giants where the kingdom's prince asks Koichi to be his bride and to bear him an heir? Either this guy is very confused or things work very differently in fantasy giant kingdoms. Also, it's boys love. The manga is published digitally under Shueisha's Screamo label. Yes, a boys love label named Screamo. And it first, its first compiled volume just shipped this week. Have you ever seen that video of a band of colorful cats playing an annoyingly catchy but adorable tune? Uh, those squishy kitties are from the Michiri Neko franchise, 
And their follow-up puppy friends are now getting an anime of their own. The new Michiri Wonko anime will premiere on April 1st and will air on TV Tokyo's children programming block. Uh, Michiri means packed or sticking together, mm -hmm. which described, describes these dogs' love of gathering together as a group. Aww, looks cute. The official Twitter account of Yuki Kikuchi's manga 100 Michigo Nishinuwani, or The Crocodile Who Dies in 100 Days, revealed on Friday that the series is getting an anime film adaptation. The manga follows the everyday life of a crocodile who is unaware that he's going to die in 100 days, so he just spends ordinary days with his animal companions, you know, just hanging out. Kikuchi, Kikuchi launched the manga on Twitter on December 12th, and the 100th and final chapter debuted on Friday, so it, it, it lives up to its name. Shogaku Khan will be publishing a compiled book volume of the manga on April 8th, which will include an original 28-page sequel story. How does that work? Hopefully, that sequel still takes place within the 100 days, I guess. I don't know. Uh, our last piece of anime series news is actually an update to a series that was already announced, but it's a pretty interesting change uh, or announcement. Manga creator Mari Yamazaki posted on Twitter on Thursday that the anime adaptation of her Olympia Kiklos manga will be a clay animation. Now, claymation does seem fitting for the storyline, which tells of an ancient Greek king who was transported to the Tokyo 1964 Olympics. This year is, of course, an Olympic year and will be the second time the Summer Olympics are held in Tokyo. Um, so that's an interesting way of doing it. The series of clay animated uh, anime shorts will air on Tokyo MX on April 20th and will also stream online. Um, I haven't seen a lot of clay, uh, clay animation recently, so curious how that'll work out. The cancellations and quarantines continue in the wake of the coronavirus outbreak, and that brings a few more anime and manga-related announcements as well. So buckle in, here we go. Firstly, Funimation announced on Wednesday that it has temporarily paused its production of its seasonal whoops, its seasonal simul dubs for anime. It's adjusting its simul dub production to allow for production members to work from home. Simul dubs from the current and upcoming seasons are currently paused, including titles like Bofuri, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, and My Hero Academia. Sorry, everyone. English subtitle releases will still continue as normal because presumably that can all be done at home. More anime and manga series and companies have continued to release their content for free for the next few weeks. The most notable of this week's announcement uh, being Kyo Annie. As a part of the Spring Vacation Youth Anime Special to be held on Nico Nico Dogo's N Anime Special channel, 17 Kyoto animation titles will be streamed for free from March 16th to March 31st. That's 17 titles. The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya will be available for on-demand streaming for the rest of the month, while the other titles will only be streamed on certain days. So, good chance to catch up on Haruhi. This next announcement is for all you fans of the tokusatsu genre, or those who wanted to get into it but haven't yet. Get this, Toy announced this week that it is preparing to launch a global YouTube channel for its tokusatsu and anime catalog. Yes, global channel. Uh, it will launch on April 6th and will update every day with new episodes from its catalog, which include entries from the Kamen Rider and Super Sentai franchises. The first two episodes of 70 different shows, that's 7-0, will debut on April 6th with English subtitles. Anime included in the release will include uh, Mirai Robo Daltanios, Combatler V, Voltas V, and Daimos. Toy said that for now, subsequent episodes will not have English subtitles, but the service does plan to make, quote, a public call for subtitles in any language, end quote. Shout Factory has also started a new linear streaming channel dedicated to, to, to tokusatsu titles. Dedicated to tokusatsu titles, that's tough to say, called, and I love this, Tokushoutsu, great name, which launched on Pluto TV on Tuesday. Now, this next news story brings up the age-old question of how much the law should try to dictate someone's daily life, or at least someone's parenting style. The Kagawa Prefecture Assembly passed an ordinance this week 
designed to compact video game addiction in kids. The non-binding guidelines will restrict children under the age of 18 to only 60 minutes of video game playing or smartphone usage per weekday and 90 minutes on weekends. It also forbids children under 18 from being on their electronics past 10 p.m. and children under 12 after 9 p.m. The prefecture, of course, has no plans to punish households who don't comply and asks that households follow the guidelines at their own discretion. Um, the ordinance also requests that game companies refrain from making games that could encourage addictive or gambling behaviors, such as microtransactions and uh, chance-based gotcha systems. The government will also provide information and support for parents and schools regarding measures for combating video game addiction. Um, granted, I think I'm, a lot of this is really more to address the issue and to set out some guidelines, but who knows. The issue was posed for public comment earlier in the year, and most of the public comments were in favor of the ordinance, in fairness. Businesses, however, were mostly opposed to it, surprisingly, with 67 out of 71 businesses that commented expressing disapproval. No big shock there. Um, now, we've been seeing lots of Demon Slayer ever since its debut, and that doesn't seem to be stopping anytime soon. This week brings two announcements of the franchise branching out into video games. Aniplex will be publishing two Demon Slayer video games, one for PlayStation 4 and one for mobile. The smartphone game, subtitled Blood Stench Blade Royale, is described as an asymmetrical survival action game where players will pit teams of demons and demon slayers against each other in various settings from the story. The PlayStation game, on the other hand, will let players engage in demon-killing competitive action, presumably playing as main character Tanjiro. The PlayStation game will release in 2021, and the mobile game will debut sometime this year, so if you're looking for some more uh, hands-on demon slaying action, keep an eye out. What's interesting there is the PlayStation 5 should be out by then. So, hmm. Finally, uh, using people's favorite entertainment to help them learn new information is always a good strategy, and the Do You Love Your Mom and Her Two-Hit Multi-Target Attacks series is getting ready to do just that of all the franchises. An English study book designed for students taking their junior high-level English courses will feature lovable mom, Mamako, and other characters from the series. The characters will help explain conversational English and grammar using everyday phrases like, for example, um, you must adventure with your parents, and my mother can defeat monsters in an instant. Not sure how useful those exact phrases will be, but they'll at least help teach grammar? I don't know, maybe? Customers that purchase the Let's Study English with Your Mom guidebook will also be able to download uh, bonus audio recordings by Mamako voice actress Ai Kayano, including a review quiz. I don't know, maybe they'll start making Japanese learning books like this too. I mean, who doesn't want their waifu or their mom or their mom waifu, whatever, to help them study, right? This isn't creepy at all. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching.